Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Continuing from the first video. When God says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. He will. But if you are proud, he will bring you down. Now, I want to continue talking about that. You know when Jesus did the uh, the uh, servant example of washing Peter's feet, and at first Peter said, oh, nah, 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 nah. Uh, you know, I'm your servant. I'm your, I'm your disciple. You're my master. And Jesus said, hey, if you don't let me serve you, you don't have any part with me. That's what I came to do. And he said, okay, well, serve all of me. I mean, you know, whatever you want to do. But listen to this. This is the point. It wasn't to be a ritual, a ceremony in a church service. First we have communion, then we have foot washing. No, I'm going to share with you what that really meant. You listening? When I was at a church in Pasadena, there was a lady, I'm just going to use her first name, because people who went to church with me will know who I'm talking about. Sister Rita. I have watched her do something, and I understood what the foot washing meant. There was a lady in our church called Sister Parker. She passed away. She was my former mother-in-law. She lived with Lou Gehrig's disease for years. One time, they had to take, she had to go to the restroom. She couldn't walk. She could barely mouth what she needed. And her son interpreted to Sister Rita and some of the others what she needed. Well, they didn't just get her into the restroom and leave her there. Sister Rita went in that big booth, the handicapped booth, helped her up out of the wheelchair, placed her on the toilet. Listen to what I'm saying. This is true love. This is not titles. This is not pride. This is not getting happy in the spirit and washing each other's feet. This is the real deal. She sat that woman on the toilet. When she was done, she wiped her, she flushed, she freshened her up, put her clothes back together, and sat her back in her wheelchair. Now, this is what I'm saying. Some of you pastors should be doing it too. Don't just look for the membership. You really want to lead the way Jesus led. That's what Jesus was talking about. You have members in your church that are really bad off, and you're always asking for an offering, what do you have to offer them? I will never forget what she did. That stuck in my mind. I respected her so highly after I saw that. When I took care of my husband, Milton, and I would get through cleaning his bottom, and I freshened him up. I considered it an honor because he was such a good man. I didn't think of wiping his behind as, ooh, I loved him. This is, this is what happens when you really love each other. I loved my husband. And after I freshened him up, for some of you, this may seem gross. Just, just turn the sound off. You don't have to listen. I loved him so much. Loved. Not just like. Not just turned on. I loved that man so much. I honored him so much. Respected him so highly. That it was a treat to me to kiss his little bottom cheeks. I loved him. It wasn't an issue with me to, to handle things that other people might be disgusted by. Even with my bare hand. It wasn't an issue. That was my man. That was part of me. Well, that's the way the body of Christ is supposed to be. Do you listen to what I'm saying? When you love, that's why the Bible always exhorts to love. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love diminishes stink. 
when that bottom stinks. Love turns off your disgust and turns on a compassion that enables you to serve in a much higher capacity. If my husband, one thing I could never handle was the smell of, ugh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Can't handle the smell, only want to think about it. But when it happened to my husband, I was cleaning up before I knew it. Now, love will make you reach beyond your own limits. It really will. Because it's not about you at that moment. It's about someone else. And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be about. That's what you leaders are supposed to be about. Not sitting up front getting the honor. But giving honor to others. Serving others. Loving others. Helping the old man down the aisle to the bathroom. And, and maybe you might have to hold it in aim form. I think about this, you guys. That's what Jesus was exemplifying when he washed feet. He wasn't doing a ceremony. He was showing love. Because most of us don't want to handle someone else's feet. He was showing the epitome of love and what love will reach out and do. He was the divine son of God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He should have been served, but he came to serve. When you get up in that pulpit, when you get in that choir room, what are you there to do? Be served or serve? To what capacity? Yeah, okay, I got emotional. But I just feel like the church misses it. We don't really get what, what all that meant. When we take communion, we're not taking communion just to remember Jesus. But we're taking communion to remember one another and our connection to one another. That he is the head. We are the body. Which means we are all a part of one another. Whether you think you like them or not. That's not your right. Because you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Very expensive price. The blood of Jesus. And he didn't die. So that you could fight amongst yourselves. And bicker about who's going to do what on the board and who's going to control what and who's going to handle what and who's going to have all the titles. And, and Come on. Church, we have to get back on track. These are the very last of days. And we are still tripping over our own two feet. Wondering why there's no power. Where is the love? Wondering why the anointing is so limited. Where is the love? Wondering why we have so many splintered churches. Where is the love? It all boils down to love. And when we don't know how to love, we have to go to God and say, Lord, give me your love, not my own, but yours. Because trust me, your love and my love stinks. But if we love with the power and the love that God gives, it gets better and better. Our relationships get richer and richer. And self-importance grows dimmer and dimmer. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about us. God bless you. I hope you heard. I hope you really heard with your heart what I was trying to explain.